Good morning. It is Friday of the first week of Lent, the first full week of Lent. Um, and we are, gosh, where are we? We're in Matthew 5, 20 to 26. Friday, the first week of Lent, Matthew 5, 20 to 26. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so Matthew chapter 5, starting with, Verse 20, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. <clears throat> whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. Whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. What is he saying? <laughs> um, so he says, for I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And what we know about the scribes and the Pharisees um, is that they were exceedingly scrupulous. So not, not so much that they were righteous, but that they're, they appeared to be super righteous. So they would, um, they would even tithe, Matthew tells us in Matthew 20, 23, we hear that like they would tithe from the small spices obtained from their herb garden. So they, you know, get a little teaspoon of spice and you make sure they take out the 10% of that. Um, and we can see this still, we can see this kind of, of scrupulous, um, legalistic righteousness um, in, in Orthodox Jews, even now, there was a, an incident in early 1992 when tenants let three apartments in an Orthodox Jewish neighborhood in Israel burn to the ground while they asked a rabbi whether it was okay for them to call the fire department on the Sabbath or whether that violated Jewish law. So um, observant Jews are forbidden to use the phone on the Sabbath. And in the half hour that it took for the rabbi to decide, yes, the fire spread to two neighboring apartments. So this is the kind of mentality that um, was, was prevailing among the, ortho, the, the Pharisees of, Jewish, of Jesus' day. Um, and he, he's saying that it looks like these people are super righteous. But we can exceed their righteousness because our righteousness is supposed to exceed in kind, right? But not necessarily in degree or in appearances. Um, so we're not made righteous by keeping the law. Um, Jesus offers us a different kind of righteousness. What he wants is for us to um, change our hearts, to become like him. Um, and he shows in this section, he's trying to, he's not doing away with the law, but he's trying to show the meaning of the law. It isn't Jesus against Mosaic law. It's Jesus against um, superficial interpretations of Mosaic law. So the two errors of the Pharisees were that like they restricted God's commands, you know, so they were like looking at the letter of the law or they extended his commands past what he intended, and they added extra burdens, extra little details of their own that were never what God intended. 
So Jesus starts with a big one. He starts with murder. He says, you have heard it said that never, that, that you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So there's some really important things in these three little instant little segments that Jesus presents. So you've heard it said that you shall not murder. It was said to those of old. And Jesus is reminding them, first of all, uh, he's reminding some of them that you're basically going on what somebody else is saying. You haven't studied it for yourself. You've heard it said. And then he's saying, you know, just because something um, is old doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. But but then he he's very quick to show them why. He says, but I say to you, this is Jesus's authority. Under my authority, I am telling you, not relying on what you've just heard from the scribes during your childhood, but I am telling you that this is how you're supposed to truly understand the law of Moses. Everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. So in the teachings of the scribes and the Pharisees, there is you shall not murder. And that's true enough. You shouldn't murder. But they also allowed anything short of murder, perhaps. Like anything short of murder might be allowed because it wasn't murder. Um, and Jesus corrects this and he says, wait a minute. Not only the people who commit the act of murder are in danger of judgment, but those who have a murderous intent in their heart, they're also liable to judgment. Those who are thinking about somehow killing the humanity of their brother, they're liable to judgment. And so he's exposing the the hypocrisy, the heresy of the Pharisees, because for them, the law was only really a matter of external observable performance. It was, it was only about what other people could see, um, how other people could measure their righteousness based on how they were performing. It wasn't about the, the state of their hearts. Um, and Jesus wants to bring this back to matters of the heart. Um, he's not saying that anger is as bad as murder. You know, when someone shouts at somebody else in, in anger, it's not like they've killed them, but he's condemning both. They're not the same thing, but neither of them is okay. Um, the laws of the people could only deal with the outward act of murder. But Jesus says that in the kingdom of heaven, the laws of, of Jesus, where people are supposed to act as if they have Jesus's heart, um, there, under that system of justice, um, morality addresses not only the end, the murder, the dead person, but also the beginning, the, the thoughts that people think that are against one's brother, all the thoughts between that first negative thought against someone to the ones leading up to murder, they're all liable for judgment. Like all those things can come under the judgment. He's forbidding us um, to, to have anger that broods and anger that holds grudges and anger that refuses to be um, assuaged. Um, anger that seeks revenge. He's saying that words can wound, like words, they can kill someone. Um, and anger isn't a sin, but it can get away from us very quickly and it can cause us to sin. So most anger becomes sinful because we let it consume us. Um, and then it's not just the other person who dies. It's us. Like we let it eat us up and destroy us. 
And then he goes on to say, whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. To call someone a fool, and this is so critical in this day and age because people just throw words around all the time on social media, in real life. Like they say things like you fool, you idiot. And that is Jesus is saying that's expressing a contempt for either their intelligence or their character or both. And that contempt is problematic. That contempt shows a disregard for the dignity of another human being. And that's a sin of the heart. It's a sin to call someone a fool, to, to um, demoralize someone by the things that we say. Jesus is making it clear that he abhors sins against man that are inhumane. And that furthermore, those are the sins that reveal a person's character. So he's telling us, he's cautioning us, take a good look at all the ways that you stop short of murder, but you don't, you're not acting out of love for your fellow man. You have actual evil in your heart. And then he goes on because he's still addressing these personal relationships and the, the problems that we have. So if you're offering a gift at the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come offer your gift. He considers it more important to be reconciled than to perform that religious duty, that religious obligation of offering the gift at the altar. He says that we can't think that as long as we check off the things that we need to do for God, um, we can justify um, bad relationships, debts in the sense of the, the relationship debts that we have with other people. Um, and. And Paul harkens back to this all the time in his epistles to the various Christian communities, telling them how important it is to have good relationships amongst one another with each other in Christian community. He says in Romans 12, 8, 8, 12 18, Paul says, if it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. So Jesus is saying, work at this. This matters. Um, and then he says, come to terms quickly with your accuser. You know, quickly settle matters of anger and malice. Don't brood on them. Don't let them fester. Don't let them catch fire. You know, when we ignore it or we pass it off, that whole part about you will be thrown into prison, we lock ourselves in a prison of our own making. When we hold on to our anger against somebody else, um, then we lock ourselves up and we make ourselves vulnerable to the devil. We give a place for him to get a foothold. Um, and it's like an entry point to those bigger things. Um, and then he says, truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you pay the last penny. Um, and now he's, he's working in figures of speech, right? So the ultimate penalty that someone is going to pay at the hands of the judge or the officer in prison. Um, th that penalty, that judge is God, right? That prison is, is the prison we lock ourselves in and leave ourselves vulnerable to sin. And this isn't about every last penny. It's not about money. Like the ultimate penalty is to suffer eternity in hell. And that's a long time, right? So that, that actually, until you pay the last penny, there's just, there is no end to the pennies that you pay when you're suffering in hell. So the point here, and you want to prop your Bibles open to Matthew 5, 20 to 26, and think about the idea that it doesn't matter how, um, how many prayers you pray, how long those prayers are, how much you, um, out there in the public square, in, in here, in the public square of Instagram, how much people see you um, being devout. Um, it doesn't matter how carefully you adhere to the letter of the law. If you can't get it right in your personal relationships and you can't 
expunge the anger in your heart, then you will suffer. You'll suffer here and now, and you could suffer forever. So pray about that. Ask God to reveal those places where you're still hanging on and go quickly and reconcile those. Um, happy weekend. It's Friday. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks for being here. Bye.